Good evening and welcome to the September 14th Town Council meeting. If you'd kindly rise and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Oh, too much. Would have been asking about it. All right, for announcements um, I have this evening are our upcoming regular meetings. Uh, they're all Thursday, September 28th, October 12th, and October 26th, all at 7 p.m. here in the Matthew Thornton Room. Uh, Paul. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Merrimack Police Department's open house is back. It will be held on Saturday, October 21st, from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Stations tours, station tour, tours, Displays and demos will be all during the day. On October 14th, Saturday, October 14th, from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., the fire station will be holding their open house. They will have displays and live fire demonstrations. Unfortunately, due to the hurricane that is coming up the East Coast, the Merrimack Fire and Police Bases and Bags 2023 softball game that was scheduled for Saturday, September 16th, has been postponed. No date has been confirmed for another game as of today. On October 6th, October 6th is the last day to register voters to change their party affiliations prior to the presidential primary election. Undeclared voters may declare a party at the polls and vote on the primary day. The date of the primary has not yet been set. To check your party affiliations, please visit the New Hampshire Secretary of State's website at http colon forward slash forward slash app dot sos dot nh dot gov also there's a link on the town of merrimack's website party changes may be completed at town clerk's office during business hours the supervisors of the checklist will hold a public session to accept new voters and party changes on october 6th at town hall from 7 p.m to 7 30 p.m the next household waste collection is Saturday, October 7th from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. at 25 Crown Street in Nashua. For the cost of $15 per vehicle, Merrimack residents can bring their household hazardous waste. This fee covers up to 10 gallons or 20 pounds of waste. There is an additional charge of $1 per gallon above 10 gallons and 50 cents per pound above 20 pounds. Fees are payable by cash and check only. And finally, Merrimack TAV app is here. Download the Merrimack TV app, on your app from your app store on your phone, your iPhone, your iPad, or Android device. Merrimack TV is also available on Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire TV devices. Merrimack TV app streams all four of our cable channels 24-7 and has hundreds of searchable on-demand content too. And it's real easy. Nicholas sat there with me and watched me download the app to make sure that I have it on my phone. It took about two minutes because of my phone, but uh, it's there. And we were able and we, we were able to search and, and everything else, so it was great. And then the last thing I want to do say is the hazardous waste collection. I went over to um, Pelham a couple weeks ago. It is very easy. So if you do have your paints, as long as they're not latex, stains, oils, gasolines, they take it all. You don't even have to get out of your car. These guys come up to your car, take the stuff right out, and you're on your way. I was there for like three minutes. So it's very easy and convenient. So if you do have uh, the list of items from our waste uh, transfer station, they have a list of what is um, accepted at these recycling days. I would uh, strongly recommend you go. Thank you, Paul. All right. Um... Comments from the press and public, if you'd like to address the council about upcoming agenda items, you could do so at this table or at the microphone over here. And seeing no one, we'll move on. Uh, recognitions, resignations, and retirements. We have a couple of um, rec recognition and a retirement this evening. And uh, uh, the uh, council is going to present a recognition award to Community Development Director Tim Thompson in recognition of his resignation from the Merrimack Community De Development Department after more than 12 years of full-time service to the town of Merrimack. Paul. Oh. 
Is that the proper attire for Concord? You no. can go to Chanel. No? Okay. Just check. Just check. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Do you want to say something? Uh, sure. Sure. So uh, Tim came to the town of Merrimack, um, and he kind of got thrown right in the fire because we were in the process of building some outlet malls. And that was Tim's first uh, forte in the town of Merrimack. Uh, helped us... Um, bring the ship through the narrow passageways and get us out on the other end of, of the outlet malls. And since then, Tim had redeveloped um, the old Shaw's Plaza to what we call now as 360. He was part of that, brought uh, forward some stuff for the council so that businesses would want to come back to Merrimack. Also had uh, worked diligently with the planning board and zoning boards in the town of Merrimack to kind of make it a little more friendly to come in front of them and, and uh, um, work through some of the difficulties that we had with those boards at that time. And then the biggest thing that Tim did was he was our writer for all our correspondence to the state of New Hampshire during our PFOA days. So we would go downstairs and say, Tim, could you write this for us, please? This is what we want to say. And Tim would write something up, and Eileen would sign it and send it up to the state. So uh, <laughs> no, Tim did a great job with us, and uh, he'll be sorely missed over the next uh, years, and we wish you the best in Concord. I know that uh, Tim's going back home to Concord um, to deal, uh, to be assistant community development director in his hometown of Concord, New Hampshire, and uh, um, there our loss is their gain. So best of luck to you in the future. Thank you. And enjoy watching your son run cross country <laughs> this year and in the future. Yeah. Chris, sure. Sure. I, uh, uh, Tim came in around the time we were, the council was desirous to have uh, our different departments be more like they're in a business, a profit-making business. Can't go anywhere else, but we wanted them to feel like they were treated properly, and, and he was at the beginning of those days where the focus really became strong. But um, the plaque is on its way, but in the meantime, <laughs> I'm going to read to you what that plaque will say. When you do get it, sure. we'll get it up to you somehow. Uh, I'm we'll sure. Come back down another time. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so, it's uh, presented to Timothy Thompson in recognition of the loyal and dedicated full-time service which you have contributed for more than 12 years to the town of Merrimack as director of the community development department. Your dedication and devotion to duty has been a tremendous asset to the town of Merrimack, and we wish to extend to you our sincere appreciation for your outstanding performance of duty. October, August 2nd, 2011 to September 8th, 2023, presented by the Merrimack Town Council and the Town Manager. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I'd just like to say, Tim, our loss is their gain. Um, I want to thank you from the citizens of Merrimack for all the things that you've done for us over those 12 years. And I'm also happy for you because that's really where you want to be instead of a, what, 45-minute drive, it's 10 minutes. Everyone can understand that. And thank you for your wife for getting, letting him come back tonight. <laughs> you know, she gave you permission. <laughs> So good luck to you. I really mean that the Thank best. Really so Tim, I, I want to extend my appreciation as well for your work. Um, I have served on the planning board for quite a few years uh, before you came in and after as well. And, and you brought a level of professionalism to Merrimack that we, we sorely needed. Uh, you, you did a lot of work on things like the master plan and on uh, fixing our uh, planning and zoning and whatnot. Uh, documents and getting them cleaned up and just putting the planning board on a on a straighter keel as far as the the dotting the i's and crossing the t's and so you've done a lot of work for merrimack and we really appreciate that and we will miss you sincerely for the efforts that you put forward for us so thank you very much for that thank you all right next tom boland uh, uh, you, you want to speak first? Okay. So, as you can see, I have a new gentleman sitting behind me, Adam Britton. He's the new finance director. Where are you, Tom? <laughs> Where are you? So, uh, Tom came to the town of Merrimack 10 plus years ago and 
I kind of threw him into a project as a consultant uh, with our trustee of trust funds. There was uh, some issues. So I said, oh, Tom, it's only going to take about 40 hours. Why don't you come work? Take a couple days. Do it. We'll be good. Three weeks later, he comes to me and says, uh, I'm still not halfway through it. So uh, he untangled a bunch of webs that uh, was with the trustee of trust funds and said, okay, now that you untangled these, you're going to stay with that group. So um, he stayed with the trustee of trust funds, bringing finance to them. Uh, in addition, uh, Tom had some uh, pretty small shoes to fill when I became town manager. So, <laughs> and he did a omen, yeoman's job at that. Uh, he was my right hand man for several of those years, eight of his 10 years. And I always could count on him to keep me straight and narrow and make sure that uh, what I was doing was legal and uh, above the above law and uh, upfront. And um, I never had to worry about our auditors when they were coming in. They dealt with Tom and Tom, uh, had everything under control. I just hope that in retirement, your golf game gets a little bit better. <laughs> you know, your handicap comes down a little bit. Yeah. I didn't want to say that. So, uh, but uh, no, I wish you the best in your retirement. I know that uh, you and your wife, Ruth, are going to do some traveling and enjoy those grandkids and see a little bit more of them and uh, have some time on the lake and all the good stuff in life. But uh, you are going to be surely missed here. Uh, you became a voice of reason in the town. People came to you. Um, we always understood what we, what you were saying. Um, you kept me grounded when I uh, when we disagreed. We uh, you you talked me through some things, and I appreciate mm -hmm. that, Tom. And I appreciate your friendship as well. Wish you the best. And you as well. We'll have your plaque coming forward soon, but. <laughs> <laughs> so, and this is uh, presented to Thomas W. Bolin upon the occasion of your retirement and in recognition of your loyal and dedicated full time service, which you have contributed for more than 10 years serving as deputy director, then director of the Merrimack Finance Department. Your dedication and devotion to duty has been a tremendous asset to the town of Merrimack, and we wish to extend to you our sincere appreciation for your outstanding performance of duty. August 26, 2013 to September 15, 2023, presented by the Merrimack Town Council and the Town Manager. The only one thing I Unlike Tim, see, Tim's not retiring. He's just going to a different job. Tom, you are retiring. That's a whole different ballgame. Uh, the only thing I wish for you is health for you and your wife so you can enjoy the many years of retirement that you have ahead of you. Take care of yourself. All right. I, I had meant to introduce our new finance manager, and I failed to do so, so I'm I'm glad Paul did that for me. And, uh, okay, we have no appointments and no public hearings. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, Mackenzie, yes, I forgot to let you know that Mackenzie has been excused for this evening. And um, I, we're moving item number three under new business, low power FM discussion. We're going to move that forward without objection. And... Um, and that's the media service coordinator, Nicholas Lavalle, is seeking the town council approval to apply for a transfer of low power FM frequency from another community. Good evening. Hey. Thanks for having me here. Uh, low power FM, I'll just give you a brief description of what a low power FM station is. A low power FM station, uh, they're available to non commercial, educational, and public safety entities, um, not available uh, to individuals or commercial operations. Um, they became available by the FCC in January of 2000. Um, neighboring communities like Manchester and Bedford in particular have been operating their FM radio stations for years through their community media divisions expressly with public safety in mind. Uh, both stations fill 168 hours of programming uh, with music, community-minded shows, and meeting coverage, live sports, and other events. Um, the media division, Merrimax <clears throat> Media Division, has listed low power FM on our CIP for several years since 2011, but each year it's taken a lower priority due to the unavailability to apply 
for a frequency from the FCC, which is the first step in the process. Um, the FCC has essentially made these um, this application window available once every 10-ish years, and they kind of do it with not much notice or fanfare. Suddenly the application window exists and you have a limited time to apply. So it's never really fallen within um, the right time or space with our budgeting process. Um, there's no cost to apply for a transfer or a relocation of a low power FM frequency. Um, the potential to bring low power FM to Merrimack actually arrived this summer. Um, so at the beginning of this budget cycle. Uh, in June, the FCC announced uh, its filing period to apply for a frequency would be open the first week of November. Um, in August, we met with the Londonderry School District as they're considering liquidating their radio station's equipment and are open to transferring their frequency to another community. Um, they presently operate 102.9 FM um, WLLO in London Dairy. Um, Harry Kozlowski is a radio veteran of 45 years. He's currently the um, program director at Bedford TV's radio station. Um, he has provided in-kind guidance throughout the past few weeks. Uh, Harry has kind of held our hand in this process of kind of getting to understand the process and also what the, the infrastructure entails, um, basically detailing the equipment and, and that infrastructure, what's required for this process to happen. Um, in that, the London Dairy transfer is the better of these two opportunities as it's non-competitive, whereas to apply for um, another signal would be. And there's only one other signal available in this area. And it's not as great as this one that we could kind of inherit from London Dairy. Um, I personally feel that bringing low power FM to residents is an opportunity to expand the media division's resources. Um, both the police and fire chief have vocalized their support as an expansion of public safety as they're familiar with how it's used in the need of an emergency. Um, if low power FM is a resource that the town council wishes to add to the media division, um, I'm happy to provide a bit more detail, uh, associated costs, answer any questions. Uh, if not, I'm happy to continue the media division's focus on our uh, building our community engagement and informing residents through our cable channels, our website, and our new dedicated streaming app that the town manager talked about at the beginning of the meeting. Um, this is not a, obviously not a decision for me as the town's media services coordinator to make. Um, I can go on and on about how great, uh, in particular, WMNH is in Manchester or how WBNH is in Bedford. Um, their programming is wonderful. I, I particularly enjoy how they inform residents and how it's just a different medium than cable or streaming altogether. I can go on and on about that. But this is not my decision to make. You're the town council. If we were to apply for this frequency, it would be this, this governing body's name and the town manager's name on the application. Um, this also would be an impact on my division and our staff. We're three full-time employees with some on-call hours from part-time employees. Um, but I would be remiss not to bring this opportunity forward to the town council. Um, as it's been on our radar, no pun intended, for... Uh, you know, over 10 years. Um, and I'm kind of putting the, I'm putting the ball in your court. So I'd be happy to answer any other questions. So when Nick brought this to me about a month, month and a half ago, I told him, go to do some more homework, do some more research. Um, we were just in the infantile stages of working with London Dairy and seeing what they had. Um, this London Dairy opportunity is a great opportunity because they cannot sell the license. It has to be transferred. So you cannot sell an FCC license to another organization. You have to transfer it. So we'd be picking up this license for zero cost of that. However, there would be some cost to buy some equipment. London Dairy has some equipment that they'd be willing to sell at, I won't say bargain basement prices, but a lot less than if we were to start this from scratch. 
The other thing that we talked about is infrastructure. What do we need? We have a tower right here sitting at Town Hall. All we'd have to do is put an antenna on it. We have other locations in town that have police radio towers, and uh, MDD has the wells where if we had to, we could put towers on there to boost our signal strength. In, in particular, the, that the MVD tower, excuse me, the there is a, a vacant police tower at an MVD site that I visited today with Ron Miner from the MVD right. um, and, and took a look at it and uh, spoke to Harry, and that tower would be um, provided a, right. or it can be power moved to and a couple other things, but the tower itself could be used for this. Could be used. So there's no infrastructure of building new towers is the point there. Um, the final piece that was for me was using this for public safety if something happens to go out and say the warming center is here the cooling center is here for flood information go there um, in case we need it it's just another avenue for us to go out there because if people's cell phones are dying or if people's tvs are out or the power is out they would have Call me old school, but I remember my father when every time we used to get a snowstorm, fill the bathtub and get to make sure the batteries in the radio work. People have radios. They could tune into our frequency and figure find out where safety is or what's happening uh, for information. Um, the other thing is, is that it brings the council to another platform. You'll be on radio now, too. <laughs> we got hair and makeup that will have radio personalities. No. It's all but, going good. But, but, <laughs> but no, it just... Puts it out there in, in another form of yep. people for people to use, um, and really the big the big selling factor. And then we did have a meeting today, and both the police and fire <clears> chief <throat> both spoke up and said, for emergency purposes, we're a hundred percent behind this. This is a great idea to have it. I know it's something that Nick has had on his thing. The other thing is you need three license agreements to run the a radio station. We already pay for two. So the third one is like $200 more a year. So it's not a big cost or a big ass to do that. And finally, the last piece was, I said, Nick, if you're going to do this, you're going to have to absorb it in your budget. And Nick's like, Paul, I already have the equipment budgeted for. And the recurring, recurring costs are between two, two thousand, around $2,000, and I can absorb that in my budget. So it's there. Uh, the cost of the equipment is less than $10,000 to get fully outfitted, at least to start with an antenna. To start, and, to start, to start with, with them. Um, to start with coverage that's essentially uh, Merrimack's defined town center. Um, and then what I would be proposing next year is uh, is in our submitted CIP um, to expand that coverage um, to townwide, which would be next year. But it, it all, all the chips are lining up. And uh, when Nick came back to me after this one, it's there. So... He's here to answer any questions because I know when you talk about low power FM, people are like, what does that mean? He's here to answer all those questions. Andy, the, you mentioned staffing. Mm -hmm. What's the impact of staffing? There's three full time employees in the media division now, um, including myself. And then we have um, part time on call hours as well. Um, I think the media division stands to grow no matter what, whether it's the amount of meetings that we're covering or specifically the more original content we produce. We've just evolved quite a bit over the past couple of years. I don't necessarily expect to come before the council and ask to hire a new part-time employee anytime in the, in the near future. Um, but I do recognize that we seem to be kind of a, a, an evolving, um, department as well. Um, there are at Bedford, there are three full-time employees, a number of part-time on-call employees, and there is a part-time radio programmer um, that came along shortly after their radio station was constructed and in and, and there. So this would impact staff. Um, would I expect to come before the council as soon as next year and ask for additional staffing? I don't think so. I think we'd have to see what the demand with the radio station is. I think to get the program up and running, um, you know, I don't think it would, I think it would impact staff. There would be more work to do. I also think that, but I also think that 
because it's we're community TV and because we're already creating content, um, a number of this content could translate to radio. Not all of it, but some. We certainly would have our live varsity game simulcast on cable as we would on radio. Bedford does that. Manchester has done it in the past. Um, we'd also share, you know, away games with communities. So, you know, a town like Nashua, who's on our border here, we could take Nashua and Merrimack games and share their feed. Um, so we're already, when we're already doing those things over cable, some of those things that we're doing over cable, we'd also be putting on radio. Um, but in, in terms of, you know, producing original content and things like that, that would be up for staff or programming the music. That would be our current staff that would be doing that. So there would be an impact, but also you think about, you know, the, um, the other times that this media division has taken on more work and we've always risen to the occasion. Um, the three of us believe in community media. We ha now have, I've, I've had 19 plus years in community media. It's something we care about. So we'd be up for this challenge for sure. Do we know why London Dairy is, has decided to move away from their I certainly do. There is one person um, at London Dairy that's in charge of their education channel. It's one person doing a, almost everything for the school district on the media side. Their radio station was a, kind of a labor of love, passion project from a video teacher who is no longer with the district. Um, I also think that um, there's a, at the time of its inception, was a, there was a school board member who was also involved. But now that they've had it for, I think, over 10 years, um, you know, that one person uh, at the school district is sort of ta uh, kind of taxed from covering their varsity sports and a number of other things. And they, he just doesn't have the hours to fulfill the radio station. But it is on the air. It is on the air. He does program it with music and a number of other things. So I was listening to it tonight. And then do we know what the decision process is for where London Dairy's license goes? I mean, is are we the only one in the queue? Is there potentially it goes somewhere else? Who makes that decision? So London Dairy knows that we were interested. Again, because it's appeared on my CIP then and, and, and it's been something that we've talked about in the past that I've presented to the council in the past. I thought it was all right for me to kind of go ahead and, and have that meeting with London Dairy and meet with the superintendent and um, their IT and and my counterpart at the school district, um, they you know they do want to liquidate their equipment, um, and then also you know if this was a commercial frequency it would be different. They could sell that commercial frequency. I I think I I I think so, but they they definitely can't sell this frequency to anyone. Um, they know that we're interested, so we're sort of. First in line. And Nick, are you tell me that it has come west. That's that's right. Thanks, Paul. So that frequency, um, there would be one frequency of it. In theory, there'd be one frequency available from when the FCC opens this application process. And that frequency is not really ideal because of where it sits compar comparatively to other radio stations that currently exist. And that was explained to me by by Harry, this radio veteran who we've been working with. But the Londonderry frequency, it can only move west. It can't move north, south, or east. It has to move west. Merrimack is obviously west of Londonderry. So it's kind of serendipitous that this has happened. It's also serendipitous that there's a tower right outside of town hall that's, that's no longer used by the police department. And then additionally, meeting with Ron Miner today and going to visit the tower at um, MVD, again, an abandoned, for lack of better terms, police tower at the, uh, that site, um, I was told that we should be able to bring power to it. There's a conduit from their substation. Obviously, we'd have to get approval from the, the MVD board for that. Um, and then also, if we need a cell service, uh, cellular or internet service to the tower, the uh, Verizon tower is right 70 feet parallel to that tower. Um, so I, I feel like it's serendipitous that these things have all sort of fallen in line. Um, and, uh, and the fact that it can only move west as well. Especially. Thank you, Nick. Uh, Nancy. Oh, thank you. Actually, I had the same question about, that Andy asked about why Londonary was transferring. But my second question would be um, you said that Londonary, they can't sell it, they can just transfer it. So if we, it, it's transferred to us, what happens if, if there comes a point in time where we decide 
for whatever reason that we no longer want to do it. What happens? What it, you just have to have somebody willing to transfer to, or I believe you can just simply relinquish it back to the FCC. Um, or dead air. Or yeah, it's, I mean to have it. If you obtain the license, there's a certain number of there's criteria that you do have to meet. I don't have that off the top of my head, but there once you do have the frequency and you've established this, you, there is a criteria that you do have to meet in terms of programming hours and 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 how many hours you're filling. Otherwise, you could lose the license. But I, I think you could just relinquish the license. Mm -hmm. And um, they would reassign it. And they'd reassign it, or it would come around the next application window. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you. So, so basically, you're saying there's there's little cost to get it and not a whole lot of anticipated cost to keep it running, and and no cost if we decide we don't want to do anything with it. Correct. I mean, and then theoretically, you could just transfer it to somebody else if if we flat decided it was useless. Correct. Um, there would be like Paul mentioned, there's um, upwards to around up to ten thousand dollars for costs that would be incurred in this year's budget that, that we have money budgeted for. And then um, next year's cost would be upwards to $30,000. At least that's what's in that I've earmarked in our CIP that's been submitted. That's specifically for low power FM. And then moving forward um, between licensing and any sort of maintenance, we project between $2,000 and $5,000 a year for reoccurring. Maintenance of, of transmitters and antennas and stuff like that? Exactly. Exactly. 30000 is to expand the coverage over more of Merrimack? Or, exactly. Because that sounds like a lot bigger number than we'd been talking about before. We were talking before about the initial $10,000. And then what I've submitted in this coming year's CIP is $30,000. But this would all still be in the media budget, which is not part of our tax base. Correct. Funded through franchise fees. I, mean, I I guess I don't personally see a great use for it. I mean, I understand police and fire think that it would be great for emergencies. I don't know that I have a functional FM radio in my house if it's not attached to my cell phone or something like that. So um, I, I'm not opposed to it at all. I just, I'm not sure I totally see the value or the value add of it. But if it's not going to take a ton of your your staff's time and it's going to be an enhancement to the media division offering in general um, i'd be willing to support it great thank you I, I, I did want to note too that you know we haven't had a ton of public asking for this but we have had public asking for this um two years ago i received an email from a gentleman he lives in town and he mentioned he was interested in low power fm and I sent him a message back and talked about how much i love manchester's low power fm and and then um you know, as this was kind of happening or uh, at the beginning of the summer, we kind of got wind of it or there was rumblings that they may open the window in the fall. And gentleman introduced himself to me at one of the concerts that we were covering, the spring concert at the high school. And he was all excited and said, I, I heard the, the, the FCC may be opening that window. And, and he was the gentleman who, who reached out to me a couple of years ago. <clears throat> and, and he's kind of just kept up with Merrimack TV and all the enhancements we've made over the past couple of years. So um, like like Tom just said, I, I do see it as an enhancement. Um, if this council didn't see a true, you know, didn't see total value in this or true value, um, you know, I, I I have an exceptional staff. I'm so grateful to have the staff that I've had over the decade plus that I've been here. Um, and you know, I, I like to say like we always we always have risen to the occasion of of showing the value in what we have um, with our resources. Thank you, Nick. So any further questions, comments? What is the pleasure of the council? We need to move. I move to approve the uh, move to approve applying for transfer of the running dairy license. Mm -hmm. Spending funds oh. from the media budget as it is. Mm -hmm. oh. um, thank you. I move to to approve the application of the transfer of the low power FM frequency from another community to Merrimack, um, and authorize up and to authorize ten thousand dollars. Up to, to ten thousand dollars. Yeah, uh, for the purchase Perfect. and acquisition of equipment to uh, get it started. Yep. Second. 
authorize the town manager to sign any documents necessary. All right, a uh, motion by Tom Tannick, seconded by Barbara. Any further discussion on your motion? Just a comment, I think, I'm sort of six one half dozen another, but I really do think I want to err on the side of providing an avenue in case the, the town needs it for a crisis. And hopefully we'll <laughs> never have to use it, but knowing that, and I think if we do this, we really have to advertise it and make it well known for it to be useful. I mean, if I'm saying I want to be able to have it for safety purposes, and that's my rationale for wanting to approve it, then I think we need an obligation along with that uh, to make sure that the citizens of the town know that's there for that reason, so that they know if something happens, at least there's a resource beyond the self. And you're right, whether they have a radio or not, but that's a whole different a issue. Powered one. I, I'd urge um, the council to visit uh, WBNH Bedford Radio's uh, social media presence or their website or listen at 105.1 FM. Um, their tag is Public Safety Radio. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, if you turn it on, you're not just listening to uh, emergency announcements, but you're listening to great music. There you go. You're, mm -hmm. listening, you're listening to great music. 24 7 you're listening to varsity sports coverage you're listening to other community oriented programming um and that way you know it's there mm -hmm. can you so. define great music i'll tell you i will i know the answer to that I, I i know the answer to that and it's safe great music is the music that you don't hear while the tomahawks are warming up on friday nights <laughs> Um, maybe we could say like Tuesday is country, Wednesday is rock, whatever. So if anyone's been to the football games, and some of that music I do, I do like plenty of it, to be honest with you, but great music is, is not that. Music, so. is, it, is great music what you run with the, with the scroll on our community TV channels? Oh, yeah. No. That's no. Zach. That's different. Right. That's, that's great. But when you that's, that's free Maybe music. we should start with that. But when you have um, when you have an ASCAP, BMI license, CSAC license, when you have these licenses through, a, a, you know, from a music publishing, you, you're you more or less limitless. Um, and the cost isn't, isn't much, so. Very good. So we'll have some debates about what defines good music. Absolutely. So Barbara, you that you have to define yeah, you your know, own show I was... if you're going to do that. The Nancy <laughs> yeah, Harrington the Nancy, radio show. My next life. That's... You know, I see this as being something that follows up with Nixle and will be particularly yeah, important true. with um, when, you know, Everett Turnpike work gets closer and closer to Merrimack and it's just like getting there real quick. Um, because the Nixel only gives you so much information and this way, you know, people can, if you still know how to reprogram your FM radio, you can have it saved and just instead of trying to read your phone to see what the Nixel is coming through, you just, you know, pop it over to the radio station and get the details. So I, I see, I see a combination of, um, uses for this and I would use it because I don't like to listen to a lot of the music on the radio. So. Just good stuff. All right. Very good. There's no further discussion? Okay. I'd like to call the question on the motion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed or abstain? Um, six zero zero. Thanks, Great. Nicholas. Thank and you. I did it. download your app, by the way. Yeah. Great. And yeah, I would like to urge those watching at home, download Merrimack TV. It's across everywhere. And I'm so happy that we can just say now, download Merrimack TV. It's on every device. So perfect. Thank you Good. so much. Thank you again. Thank you, Nick. Um, Mr. Lee, it had been suggested to me that maybe you wanted to speak on one of our future agenda items. If you're just here to hear it, then i sorry to have bothered you. But if you wanted to speak, I was going to, we don't have that opportunity during the agenda item. I, I understand that. Okay. okay. Public I, I hearing. Just here in case. Oh. Hear what's going on. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you. Sorry to bother you. All right. Next on the agenda, I would just legislative updates. Uh, did Nancy? Sure. Thank you. Um, I just think short sort of update. Uh, this week is the week that um, those of us in the House file um, legislative service requests for any potential bills that we would like to to um, to sponsor this year. 
Um, tomorrow at four o'clock is the deadline. Um, I know I just looked actually, it was 120 yesterday and there's 336 right now. Um, I, I put three in before, but I think I have four more that are going in tomorrow. Um, just quick update. Two of the uh, the bills that I, I've submitted are commission bills. One is the uh, our PFAS, our state's PFAS commission. The timing will be up. And clearly with all of the things happening um, in New Hampshire, but especially in our southern New Hampshire uh, community, that um, there's a lot of work to do. And I know DES is in support that we certainly need to, to re-up. So I, um, I wrote a bill that will reestablish the PFAS Commission. Um, also wrote a bill and submitted it that will reestablish the Commission on an Environmentally Triggered Chronic Illness, which is runs very parallel to a lot of our work in the PFAS Commission. It really just follows the um, the public health impacts of all kinds of environmental um, uh, triggers and contaminants in this in the state. And the other one that I that I um, submitted really is relative to the PFAS remediation loan fund. Um, I think back to the days when PFAS we were just learning about it and we needed money for testing and we needed there was no money um, to um, available. So we used um, at the time there was that the MBTE. Um, uh, fund and there was testing for that at, and they tested for PFAS at the same time. So we were able to use that fund, those funds. Um, but um, one of the, the bill that I've written will basically require that if we have any um, uh, the proceeds, fi final proceeds from lawsuits and settlements will go into not the general fund because then they can disappear, but they will be specific to PFAS remediation and, and stuff. So I'm working with a couple of attorneys up around that. It's not, I mean, the bill is in, but it, there will be amendments. Uh, I just thought it was important to um, keep the money where we know we're going to need it because not only here, but as we've seen from the last testing by DES, wells all over the state are testing, um, you know, above MCL. So um, that's it. And I'll update um, at, at our next meeting about the other, the additional bills. So thank you. Just one for you tonight. Um, last two, Thursday was the last day the transfer station had extended hours um, until next spring. Normal business hours are 8 to 4 at the transfer station, Tuesday through Saturday. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. No consent agenda. Item 1 under old business. Um, the town uh, council discussed the request of an additional high school representative member position on the Merrimack Conservation Commission. And we'd ask Paul to take a look into that. And so I, I did some research. Um, basically, the Conservation Commission was established March 3rd, 1967 by town meeting pursuant to RSA 36-A and then reaffirmed when uh, the charter was approved in 2007. Um, by doing that, the charter article read, Conservation Commission, there shall have there shall be a conservation commission consisting of seven members, six of these members to be appointed by town council for terms of three years, such terms staggered. One town council member shall be appointed annually to serve as an ex officio. Uh, there shall also be three alternate members appointed for the same manner of regularly appointed members, except no more than one alternate appointed to the term shall expire in a single year. The town council shall fill vacancies for the period of an expired term. The Conservation Commission shall have all the powers granted to the Conservation Commission by New Hampshire state law. Um, and then doing some more research, 36A colon 3 reads, by state law, the Con, Con, Con Commission membership is capped at seven members. That's by state law. You can't go to eight, can't go to ten, it's seven members across the board. So looking at that, I went back to the Conservation Commission. I gave them two options. I said option number one is um, you call the high school position a student representative instead of a member. This way, the Conservation Commission could continue to have seven voting members plus a student rep. The language would read seven members. Six of these members shall be appointed by town council for terms of three years, and it goes on to follow it. The one change would be one student representative would be recommended by the school board and appointed by the town council. This individual is a not is not a voting member nor a member of the quorum for quorum purposes. 
which that does is that he's just a representative. It's kind of like what the school board does with their member. Um, uh, they have a, a student rep. That would be the similar. Uh, or option two was to make this uh, an official voting member. Um, conservation came back and voted on Monday. Were you at the meeting, Andy? I'm sorry um, to put you on the spot, but they voted for option number one, which was to make it a student representative position. Um, all I would need from the council is to reaffirm that, affirm that decision that was made by the conservation uh, so I can start working on preparing this charter change because it will be a charter change to add that new language that I spoke about. Yep. I, I like that option. So, um, Andy, did you? Yeah, it, it was unanimous by the Conservation Commission. Everybody wanted option one. Yeah. Very good. I'd like to make a motion to reaffirm the decision made by the Conservation Commission related to the student representative. Do I need to say more than that? or No, and tell manager to begin the process for a charter change. As well, yes. Second. Motion by Nancy, second by Nancy Murphy. That's right, Nancy it is a charter change there. Yeah, I correct. forgot, you're right. Right, uh, Barbara. What's the length of the term again? It's one year, right? One did year. You, is, did you have that in there? Usually they are, I thought you the read kids. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, I didn't put in for one year. Interested. It's it's up to the board, the, the school board, to reappoint. Yeah, we we discussed one year term. I can potentially put that you there. get that student it, rep for nine months, which is another reason why we didn't want that That's individual important. to be part of the quorum, because in the summertime, <clears throat> you potentially may not get that individual. Yeah. Right, right. For one year. Okay. And yep. I, can I put would that do in the there. year because it is in the charter. That would be yeah. important. No, I agree. I could put that in there. Right. Any further discussion? Okay, I'll call the question and the motion. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed or abstain? Six zero zero. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Item one under new business. The uh, manager is going to provide an update to the council on the Heritage Commission membership requirements. Uh, it's a request we made during the town council retreat work session. Correct. Um, a lot of research. <laughs> um, in, uh, in 2000, in 2000, Article 26, the town voted to establish a Heritage Commission. And uh, in 2000, uh, same art in 2000, Article 27 gave them up to $500. Um, in reading this, then I looked at could the Heritage Commission be disbanded because of membership? Um, and I talked to our town attorneys, and they said that uh, it could be deactivated. However, it's in the charter. So once again, we'd have to do a charter change if, if that's the way we wanted to go. Um, and then looking into it more, um, I found something that we haven't been doing. So... Since the charter in 2007, we have never done this. Uh, the charter basically says that the town council appoints three members full term, one ex officio from town council, one ex officio from the planning board. We have never asked the planning board for a member, ever. <laughs> so, oops. Yeah, oops. Well, yeah, we're all looking at term. Oops. <laughs> So in doing research, we, we figure that we have two members already appointed that have their terms. We have our town council representative, ex officio. We'd have to ask the planning board for theirs. They would have a quorum for their meetings. We also have a citizen who did come forward. He's just checking if the meetings could be changed because of his schedule because he has commitments on Monday nights. Um, and, but he, he's willing to do it to be part of this commission committee. So looking at all this stuff, what we really don't have for this committee is alternates. So we'd have to get alternates um, interested in, in the heritage and bring alternates in. Um, however, in doing more research and looking at the bylaws, the bylaws have never been changed for the heritage commission. Still says 
selectmen. It doesn't talk about the change in membership. So we'd have to update the bylaws as well to make the bylaws current. So I am here tonight to see if the town council wants to continue with the Heritage Commission. And if they do, we will ask the planning board at their next meeting to recommend an ex officio member for the Heritage Commission. We'll work on changing the language in the bylaws to change anything that says selectment to town council to needs to say five members needs to read three members and then one board uh, town councilor and one planning board member we'd have to change that in the bylaws as well um and then put in our, the rsa which is the requirements because heritage also is rsa 673 colon four small a RSA 673 colon 5 talks about membership with heritage commissions as well. Mm -hmm. So we need to make those changes. So the first question is, is the council in favor of continuing the heritage commission or disbanding it? Pardon. That's a loaded question, I know. So have you spoken with the co-chairs for Heritage regarding this question? The co-chairs are trying to get meetings, but they can't because they, can, they can't get a quorum together because of not having enough membership. Oh, I know. But <laughs> with having the two ex officio members, one planning board, one town councilor, it'd make it easier to get the quorum because then you'd only need three-fifths. With instead of trying to get three out of three, you have two plus two right now. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Um, because I, being on both planning board and heritage, I've been kind of fulfilling that role because that whole thing about the graveyards mm -hmm. that you know about, um, you know, I, I was able to work with both units or, or both teams to say, you know, how can we make sure that this particular issue doesn't slip through the cracks? Um, so I think it's a good idea. I would just leave it so the planning board would need to appoint, correct? Correct. And not double dip like with you. Well, it would add a, a an, correct. an additional that, voice correct. in addition correct. to mine well, right. on it, both it, boards. I, I, that's what I want to Yeah, it can't be me. That's what I want to clarify because you are a member of the town council. Right. And also the planning board. Right. So they could say, well, you could cover both of them. Yeah, no. But that, that doesn't defeats help the, purpose. the premise. No. Yeah. And if that was the case, if Barrow, because she's ex officio to the planning board as a town council rep, if they said, well, we want to appoint you as our rep, then the town council could say, we need to appoint somebody else at that point. But it'd be best if a planning board member, and it can be an alternate too. It doesn't have to be right. a full-term member. Right. It could be an alternate on the planning okay. board as the appointed a good point. member to, to the board. And we will make those points when we, if it sounds to me like you do not want to disband. So we will make those points when we move forward I'd and like, ask for a I'd person. I'd like to try and save it. I'd like to try. I don't know if it would work, though. What do you guys think? I think we can... Honestly, I think... Give, give me some time. Let me go to the senior center. Let me go to the senior meeting on Monday. I'll ask if I can take five minutes off. I can ask somebody over there if they would be interested in becoming an alternate to the Heritage Commission. And if if it's if that's what the council wants to try to save it to try to get some alternates up on that, a lot of um, a lot of previous years it was double duty between the historical society and the heritage. Yes, it's yes. I was gonna say, but it's, historical is is separate from the town. But at the same time, I'm sure there's a lot together. of overlapping. Mm -hmm. So right. why don't you can be on both, right? You can be on both. So, so it's not. Let, let me talk 
to the historical society, see if they want to become alter, alternate members. And let me see if I can get a couple more alternates. I really hope that the gentleman that you interviewed last week would uh, be able to do it if they can change the day of the meeting. Right. Um, uh, right. you know, so, yeah, let, yeah, have those conversations. Yeah. So, all right. That's so, I, I game for that. All right. So, I. You guys think the same? I didn't. I saw Tom's look. I didn't know if you. Had, oh. oh, okay. All right. I, I am more What's than your happy. Opinion, sir. I'm more than happy to do that. The one thing that I would have to say is that um, we definitely need to change their bylaws. Anyway. Yeah. Anyways, if we're going to save it, we definitely need to come back and and change their bylaws. And I think I have it here that we could do the motion in my memo that talks about what we would need to change on their bylaws. Um, and that's appointment of members and alternates. Are you comfortable with that direction? I'm comfortable with the direction. If the council wants yep. to make the motion, though, to change the bylaws okay. tonight, that'd be great, oh, too. We can go ahead and do that. Is that something the town council? Is that something the town council changes, the bylaws for the Heritage Commission, or do they they should do it. change that? They bring it forward to you. So oh. I, I can I can suggest that to them. <laughs> we can do that. Forward. That can be part of your spiel. Okay. So you need a vote for that? Nope. Okay. I will bring it back to them and have them bring it forward. Very good. Okay. That your works. recommendations. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Paul. Thank you, everyone. Next item on the agenda under new business number two, uh, council consider the appointing the following individuals to town committees, pursuant to charter article four, section eight. Uh, Danielle Melanson was uh, interviewed for the conservation commission as an alternate member, alternate member, and Mark Williams uh, was uh, interviewed for the planning board alternate position. And uh, we did that this past month. I can't remember what day it was. Thursday, last week. Thursday? Yeah. How, yes, it was How just last week. we forget? <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, that's not a good sign. So yeah. uh, um, it was uh, two new individuals, so we're very happy about that. And um, uh, Danielle uh, wasn't able to be interviewed. We did our first Zoom interview. I think it was a first at that's this right. moment. And, yeah. Um, yeah. and she's pretty happy. So she isn't here this evening, but Mark is. And um, so... Uh, if I don't know if um, somebody would have any further discussion or questions. Well, it looks like you guys all recommended. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So um, do you want to do it together? We'll do it together. Yeah. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to appoint Danielle Melanson as an alternate member to the Conservation Commission and Mark Williams as an alternate member to the Planning Board. Second. I mean, and it's clear. I mean, yes, the recommendations. And they were both great. Yeah. If there's no further discussion, call the question. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed or abstain? Uh, 600. And um, so. Yes. Oh, gosh. Then, Mark, if you could join me right over here. He needs to swear at you. I mean, swear you. Raise your right hand and uh, it, uh, you could just, if you'd like to just read through this, that would be great. Just uh, read it out loud and stay <laughs> I got that. <laughs> Whereas there is a vacancy in the office of planning no, board. Just, no, just the O's. Hey, you're the one. I'm going to read that. Uh, I'm sorry. You pointed I did. That. I pointed it out. Right you told me to do that. I sure apologize. That, this is it. <laughs> that makes a lot more sense. <laughs> I, Mark Williams, do solemnly swear and sincerely swear that I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform all duties incumbent on me as an alternate member of the Merrimack Planning Board. According to the best of my abilities, agreeable to the rules and regulations of this Constitution of Laws, the state of New Hampshire, so help me God. Thank you, sir. 
Yes, sir. You follow the orders, though, like, yeah. Just like it is here. You already take. Did you just take the other one by chance? We're sanding back. Both of them went down. One mm -hmm. What do you do with the other one? We're, we're signing Danielle's. We're signing yeah. Danielle's. Oh, you have Danielle's down there already? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, very good. All right, item number four under new business the council to hold the first reading of the proposed zoning ordinance amendments to repeal section two. To, dot two zero two dot four dot d mixed use developments permitted in the i1 district by conditional use permit and the <clears throat> and the correction of sections numbers in the remainder of section two point zero two point four pursuant to, char to charter article five yes nancy i'd like i'd like to make a statement before we start deliberating on this because of my past expressed concerns about the development of the premium outlet lower parcel, it has been implied that I cannot be impartial about consideration of this ordinance. Although this ordinance action would not impact any plans already approved for this parcel, I will, re uh, <clears throat> I will recuse myself from deliberation in order to ensure that any discussion, deliberation, or votes are perceived as not being tainted by my involvement. Okay, so I'm just going to sit in the, in the um, audience. Thank you. No, very good. Thank you, Nancy. Paul, did you want to? Uh... Yeah. Um, Robert, you want to come on up? Robert, Robert Price. Um, is here. We should have had Tim talk about this before he left. <laughs> um, basically, what, what we're looking to do is we're looking to repeal the entire section that talks about mixed use developments printed in the I-1 district by a conditional use permit. And, and like you said, that uh, we're looking to repeal the, all the language and take another deeper look at it when we do do our master plan, which is coming up in the next um, year. Um, and really what we're looking at is that, and I want to read this statement as well, all previously approved mixed-use conditional use permits, the CUPs, that existed at the time of the session, the section being repealed, shall be subject to the requirements of the former section 2.02.4.D and existing in the zoning ordinance revised as of January 14th, 2021, any proposed modifications or amendments to these previously approved CUPs shall be required to compile with requirements under the zoning district they are located within and or with the provision of Section 9 non-conforming uses. So if somebody's already got a CUP on one of these properties, they are allowed to continue to move forward in the process. If they want to change their CUP or amend it, then it would fall underneath this. Repeal. Right. Uh, and then, of course, there was an error in, you know, D, E, F, G, the lettering, so we'd, we'd fix that at the same time. Um, but that's, that's in a nutshell. It went, uh, the town council voted on this, approved it 
to go to the planning board for their public hearing and notification. They did review it and uh, they, uh, they voted not to recommend this to the town council. A 500 vote not to recommend the town council right. to repeal. Because they wanted to have input into what the wording would be moving forward and, yeah. and didn't have that opportunity, so they were opposed to it. They were opposed to it. However, by repealing it, if the council wants to move forward, the motion would be to move this section to a public hearing. Yes. All right. Yeah, I, um, I, I felt the way the CUP process was going wasn't necessarily what was in the best interest of the community, which is why I'm in support of uh, moving this on to allow the uh, the master plan committee when it's put together to take to look into this. I think there's better opportunities uh, available to the town, and and that's that's where I am on the position of it. Uh, Barbara, I didn't know if you had anything. Uh, I, didn't um, I just want to clarify that because this is an action of the town council. Uh, and after consultation with legal, I have been recusing myself from these discussions at the planning board. But I will add from this standpoint, um, just so that people wonder why, you know, what what is behind this, I have received several emails and i think others have as well regarding um some of the issues going on with the constant building in the town and the fact that no matter what gets approved that doesn't seem to be what's being built so uh, it, this is also generated this action is also generated by the citizens of merrimack as well Tom. So let me just add that I was on the planning board when this went into effect, and I heard many different CUP presentations. And as Barbara just alluded, none of them have come in the way they were presented, at least initially. And in fact, they didn't come in the way they were approved initially, and they're constantly being changed and modified. Um, and so my feeling behind this is that it gives us a chance to step back from the whole process and review it to uh, and. and as it was presented to me, there were two options. We could either spend a lot of money right now and revise this, review it and revise it over the next year or so, um, and then turn around and do the master plan. Or we could cut this off here and say, let's just take a breather for a year and a half, get into the 10-year master plan and revise it and bring it forward in one swell poop to, to go through the whole thing uh, with all of our surrounding communities in mind and things of that nature, rather than spending a dedicating a fair amount of time and resources uh, and money to to update the plan as it is right now because I'm frustrated personally and I know I've talked to a lot of people as Barbara alluded to as well that are frustrated that the programs that are coming into the town are modifying themselves substantially from what they uh, presented and you know and when they present themselves with a glowing program and everybody gets excited about it and then it's referred to by some as crab boiling, where you slowly change it so that nobody gets real excited until you realize when you look at it two, three years later, it's not the same thing at all. And it's not what I would have approved if you had told me that back then. Um, but, you know, crabs will allow you to boil them to death if you just heat the water slowly. And these programs are modified slowly and carefully and they're they're changed from what they were. So I, I think we need to, to step back and take a look, see where the community really wants to be and what we should be doing. And that's why I'm supporting this effort to just kind of say, let's take a back seat for a minute and, and figure out what this really should be rather than trying to rush through, spend a lot of money, spend a lot of time and energy uh, trying to rush through an enhancement and then have to go through the whole process anyway when the 10 year plan comes up in a year or so. In fact, I probably ought to be in process right now. So um, that's that's my feelings behind it. So I'm in support of this ordinance change. Um, I was going to have Robert's. Uh, I should have come to you first, probably, Robert. But uh, let me have Andy, and then uh, I'd like you to speak about the the process as we move forward, the master plan timeframes and such. Uh, but Andy, yeah. and I agree with Tom. You know, I I think the original intent of this 
was to create some mixed use areas in town where you have residential within walking distance of, you know, some commercial places that they could go visit, whether it be restaurants or entertainment or, or whatever it is. When the planning board was here previously to give their annual report, I brought this up at the time. And the, the comment that I made was, you know, it's deafening from the town to hear that the town is, is tired of seeing all of the apartments. And so when I brought that up, the response I got was, well, you know, according to the ordinance, you know, if someone wants to build an apartment and a storage facility that that meets the intent and there's not a lot we can do about it. Right then and there from that response, I knew that this part of the ordinance was not meeting the original intent. And so for that reason alone it is why I support doing this. I also don't support rushing into it. As Tom said, you know, we could rush into this, spend a bunch of taxpayer money. And then we're going to turn around and spend a bunch of taxpayer money again to do the master plan. That was one of the things that I heard out of the, the, the planning board as they reviewed this, that, you know, the town council was throwing the, the baby out with the bathwater and that we could take a, a different approach to do this. We could take a different approach to do this, but it's, it's spending taxpayers money to do that. And I'm not willing to do that. We're, we're going to spend that money as part of the master plan. Anyways, we should do this at that time. Robert, would you want to speak to that master plan process or when it begins and or when when you anticipate it yeah. beginning? So, and Paul, please correct me if I'm wrong, but um, as I'm now just jumping into uh, the the role that uh, Tim has left, and I'm starting to come up to speed on on the, uh, the CIP and where things stand. I believe the master plan is scheduled for 2025. Um, if that's accurate. You know, we'd be looking at doing probably an RFP or something sometime along the lines next year to find a consultant for that. And master plan process itself would anticipate maybe one to two years to get through, depending on how the process goes. 24-25. Okay, because I was going to... 24-25 yeah. is, is in... It's in the 24-25 time frame. Okay. To start the master plan, but there is the RFP process. There's vetting it. Robert's right. Probably you won't, we're not going to really see anybody prior to 25 to really get going on this. Then there's the interviews and it takes a while. I think the last one started and I was acting. So 2011 and we didn't see a final until 13. Yeah. So we, this is old news now, but we kind of dropped the ball. We didn't get it started. Uh, you know, we kind of should have. No, no, it's on its schedule. This is schedule. this so is on its schedule. The planning, the the master plan is on schedule. Okay, for, the document for when it was, you know, twenty three, twenty four, twenty four, twenty five. Document that time frame. Okay. Yeah. The point being, the document itself had its ten year validity shelf life period. So I think that's yeah. Okay. So now we're starting. Okay. When it, when it begins, yeah. All right. Um, what is the pleasure of the council? Move to a public hearing. Second. Um. Motion by Tom Kenning, seconded by Andy, uh, to move it to a second reading. Um, will that be at our next meeting, Paul? Um, we'll try our hardest to get it on the 20th. We should have enough time to get in the paper for the 20th. So we have the seven clear days. So I'll talk to, um, to get it in tomorrow, try to get it in tomorrow. Okay. And it should 20th. be. I just don't know what the papers are doing now for cutoff dates for public hearings. Yeah. For when? The 28th. 20, okay, 20, but I, I have said to, 20th. I'm I have to, that be, it has to be in the paper by the 20th. Oh, okay. For my seven clear days, which means I have three, you know, basically probably tomorrow to get it in. So it can get in for Wednesday, but we'll get in the paper. We'll do what we can do to get it in. Thank you. There's time, yep. Okay. Any further discussion on the motion? Call the question. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Oppose or abstain. A six zero zero. Five zero zero. Five zero zero. Five zero zero. <laughs> With Nancy had recused herself. Yep. All right. Um, Thanks, Robert. Um, item number five under new business. Uh, council to authorize. It's being asked to authorize the request for withdrawal of funds from the road infrastructure capital reserve fund and to be designated. Uh, 
for the emergency expansion joint repair of Amherst Roads Bridge, totaling $156,970. It's so nice that we have a deputy director that Dawn can say, Leo, you live in you live in town. Would you mind doing this for me? So Leo's here tonight. No. Dawn Dawn had an Dawn had an emergency. She had a 10 to tonight. So she asked Leo to come in and, and speak on her behalf uh, for this. So Leo is uh sorry about that. Is fully versed in, you know. Well, the good news is I don't have a 42 slide presentation. Ah. So we're just going to look at the um, photo of the expansion joint. Uh, last winter, a plow hit the expansion joint. You'll see that it's got two strips of metal that it goes across the road. And a plow just caught the edge of it and uh, damaged it. Uh, I believe Don had sent out drawings to the town sure. council yep. letter um, <laughs> this, this the, to simply explain what the expansion joint does is it allows the bridge to expand with temperature differences and it seals the roadway and so the expansion joint still doing what it's supposed to do it allows the bridge to expand and contract but the seal is damaged now and the important part of this is water is getting down between the expansion joint and right below this is where the bridge deck and the bridge beams land so if this continues uh, if we let this go what will happen is the bridge beams will start to corrode the bridge deck will start to corrode and unfortunately the cost to fix the bridge will expand greatly so there is a membrane. I know people all two pieces of metal. It's 150. There is a membrane that goes on top of the bridge deck that helps keep the bridge deck from corroding as well. Because when you put salt on cement, we all know it corrodes the cement. So there's a membrane. And what happens is the membrane comes up, you put these expansion joints on, and everything gets locked into place. What they'll be doing is they will be reconstructing part of that membrane on that deck as well as replacing the whole expansion joint it's supposed to take two to three weeks to complete this project that's what Don at most and we have already talked with Amherst and the police department and the fire department and the bus and the buses and the school to say that if this project gets approved we're trying to do it before this plowing season in the memo it says four to five weeks I don't know if that was a misstatement there or it was truncated a little bit more it was so, yeah. you're trying to get these guys in and out and then we're using a reputable person who does a lot of these bridge work does a lot of bridge work rm piper is the guy we went out to bid he was the one who won the was bid the only one because i was I, well we, frankly, we, we went I don't out the business but i was shocked at 156 yeah it's, it's, that, that was actually lower than what our consultant told us it was going to cost really yeah. 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 So, and it's a fairly involved process. But what RM Piper is going to be doing is they're going to remove the expansion joint from where it is now, which is right at the abutment and bridge deck where those two meet, and they're going to bring it back into the abutment a little bit. That way, if the seal ever fails again, what will happen is that water will just simply run off underneath the bridge. It won't have any effect to the bridge the structure yeah so it's actually improvement it is yep it's so it is, this is up this is on the uh the leading edge it's only the one side is going to be repaired that appears to be yeah. on the left of the correct picture. yeah it's only on one side of the so, bridge and that's the up against is... the the land mass is what you're telling me yeah okay yeah. barbara just curious, is there anything that the plow drivers can do so that we don't have problems on other bridges? Like, I mean, they got a plow, so how do they miss these things? They do, and this is a unique bridge um, expansion joint with those metal edges. A lot of them don't have that, or a lot of them have the it, They're flatter. Kind of like a, a flatter or inset surface. So, so this was just a design failure that th the, the plow, plow happened to hit up? Yeah, yeah. Okay. This is an older design. Actually, the bridge is an older bridge, but it's in very good condition otherwise. So that's the other reason why we really want to jump on it is because it's in great condition. 
we don't want to have any deterioration. Right. So. Right. No. Very good. All right. Um, any further questions, comments? And the pleasure of the council is. Okay. Make a motion. Barbara. Uh, I move to for the town council to authorize the withdrawal of funds from the road infrastructure capital reserve fund and to be designated for the emergency expansion joint repair totaling $156,970 and that the town manager be empowered to sign all appropriate documents. Next. Motion by Barbara, mm -hmm. seconded by Tom Koenig. You would make Bill proud. <laughs> <laughs> no, she didn't say and or. Uh, she did yeah. it correctly. <laughs> Uh, did she have to mention the name of the bridge, or is that is that understood because That's of the understood. agenda? It's very understood. good. There's no further discussion. No question. All those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed or abstain. Six zero zero. Thank, Thank you so much. Appreciate it, Leo. <laughs> She'll be happy. All right. Uh, minutes. August seventeenth. Minutes. Two thousand twenty-three. All good. I didn't have any problem with it. I'm good. All right. Okay. And I'll move to approve the minutes of August 17th, 2023. Second. Andy, second by Barbara. That's written. That's written. That's what I said. Wow. All those in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Opposed or abstain? Is that 600, Barbara? Was that a yes? Yeah, was Six zero zero. I did. Sorry. Uh, comments from the press. Comments from the public. Seeing none. Comments from the council. Wow. Seeing none. Seeing none. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion by Nancy. Second by Barbara. All those. <laughs> all those in favor of adjournment, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposition or abstain. Six zero zero. Thank you very much, everybody.